real-time feedback on the broadcast, and that'll make everything much better. Okay, waiting for Facebook. All right, come on, Facebook. Uh, so I'm trying something new that should ideally help me get better feedback on this process. Thanks to everybody who told me yesterday that the stream uh, had no audio. So I'm redoing it, uh, and we're going to see if I can get like live feedback from y'all. I don't want to waste too much time on that, though. So uh, here we go. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll figure that out later. Anyway, so, okay, so... Beaglebone is awesome. Uh, you're probably aware of this already. Uh, it is a an awesome little computer that was originally designed to fit inside of an Altoids tin. If you're not aware of the Pocket Beagle yet, though, you totally should be. Uh, but we'll go over that in a minute. Right now, the new news is that there's a couple of new utilities capes available for these. Capes for Beaglebone are like uh, shields for Arduino or hats for Raspberry Pi. Uh, let's check them out, yeah. So first up, we've got Beagle Wire. This is a cape that enables your regular size Beagle Bone boards to uh, work with FPGAs. FPGAs are super cool because they make it, basically it's a, a set of programmable logic gates. So like you can wire them up with, with software however you like. Uh, and that way it tends to act faster than a regular uh, CPU or microcontroller with uh, better throughput, and so you can do stuff real fast and uh, with less load on your main processor. So that's super cool. It's uh, all open source, totally open source here. Uh, why would you want this? So one cool thing about this is that it allows users to break away, as they say, from large proprietary FPGA tool chains by allowing the use of the open source IceStorm tool chain, which is lightweight so it can be installed on various platforms. Uh, there's all kinds of possible use cases that they have. Um, for example, down here, robotics and automation, logic devices, prototyping, data acquisition, mobile applications, and education. Uh, another cool thing about this is that it is low cost. So uh, it'll help you get, you know, introduce people to FPGAs who might not otherwise be able to break into this. Uh, you've got a whole breakdown of this on the crowd supply page, including features and specs. If you're curious for more, you can get one for $85, uh, which is honestly pretty good. You've got about a month and a half left, and it's 30% funded, so go ahead and support it. Super cool. Um, next up, we have the Bella Mini. So this is really neat because it brings low latency audio to the Pocket Beagle. That's right, the Pocket Beagle, the teeny tiny one. Um, they already had a Bella that was for the original larger uh, BeagleBone. And so now this is the small version that you can put in your pocket and make a little tiny synthesizer and whatnot. It's super cool! If you've ever tried to work with audio on, for example, the Raspberry Pi or whatever, uh, you may have had a lot of issues with latency. I definitely have. Uh, and so anything that makes my life easier as someone who likes to work with sound, input and output, uh, this makes me very happy. Um, yeah, so we've got some information about that on our blog, which is either blog.hackster.io or hackster.io slash blog or whatever. You can follow us on Medium. Never miss a thing. Uh, they've got more in-depth tech specs on the Bella.io blog uh, of their own. So if you go to blog.bella.io, you can find uh, pre-order information, more in-depth stuff, this cool demo of them putting it inside a tennis ball for some reason. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> my guess is it's a clip from some longer video that includes some cool stuff. Lots of FAQs, which is neat. And when you go to pre-order it, you find that you can get a discount on it right now. Um, either £55 uh, for the cape on its own, plus a couple of little extras, or uh, the starter kit, which I believe includes the pocket beagle, I might be wrong, but um, that goes for £110. Uh, so, and that's like £10 off the standard, that's £5 off. Um, so you get a pretty cool discount if you order it right now. And uh, that's going to be shipping in May. When does the, uh, does the beagle wire have a shipping date? Uh, May 31st, 2018. So yeah, you could get a ton of like sweet 
uh, Beagle merch <laughs> and tools <laughs> starting in May if you order these things now. Uh, so what is the Pocket Beagle itself? Obviously on beagle.board.org they have a rundown of what it is. Uh, so basically it uses this Octavo Systems chip. It's a uh, it's actually a, a system in package, so it includes uh, like the ARM Cortex M3 and the Cortex A8, uh, a couple uh, some some RAM, some EEPROM, and power and battery management, all in one thingy package. <laughs> uh, let me show you close up what this looks like. It's so neat. I mean, if you'll notice, the the micro SD card is almost the largest thing on here, and that's totally crazy. You've still got a ton of pins. Look how many pins you have, that's so cool. And they're labeled beautifully on the silk screen, uh, which, is, which is so good. And uh, yeah, so this is the Octavo system and package. Um, so this is basically an entire BeagleBone board. Uh, one cool thing about that is they actually have a slightly different one on here, which is the BeagleBone Blue. Uh, it's slightly bigger, uh, and if you look up the the system and package itself, then you'll find that it has different specs on the Octavo page. But, um, yeah, this used to be an entire beagle bone, and this used to be a cape that went on top of the beagle bone. And what they've done is turn this into a single package and just mash them together so it's a single board now, which is super cool. This is for robotics. It's the beagle bone blue, it's got all these outputs and inputs, servos and motors and stuff, and sensors and buttons and whatnots and feedback LEDs. So, yeah, Pocket Beagle. Um, let's take a look at some more of this stuff on my computer. <laughs> Here is the Octavo chip. Uh, you can actually, this is linked from the BeagleBone page. Uh, and they tell you all about it. Uh, just yesterday I p finally published this Getting Started with Pocket Beagle uh, tutorial that I have been uh, putting off publishing for a while just because I wanted to uh, double check a couple things. And uh, it totally, oh yeah! Anyway, yeah, this is a pretty basic intro. It'll just be like your first, you know, five or ten minutes with it. Uh, but it walks you through what it's like to work with this. And we're also going to take a look at that in this video. The reason I just flipped out and went, ooh, is because I remembered from this picture that it fits inside an Altoids Minis Smalls tin. Like, that's the thing. Like, the original BeagleBone, right, it fits inside a regular Altoids tin. That's why it's got these rounded corners and stuff. Filleted, I guess, is the, the word. Um, and then you've got this one, which fits inside of there. So cute. Obviously, you would want to insulate it from, you know, uh, shorting, because <laughs> the case is metal. But, um, yeah. Boop! Tiny computer in your pocket. Totally cute. Eee, come out of there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Back to the computer. Uh, if you want a more... In-depth intro, look at this one by Ken Sheriff, uh, which was uploaded to Hexer by Jason Kreidner, who's an awesome person, who's at beagleboard.org. Um, yeah, he goes through all kinds of in-depth stuff, looking at the Octavo package, uh, talking about the same sort of startup things, but also how to talk to it over the serial console. Um, you can use an FTDI friend from Adafruit or any other uh, little... You are uh, USB to serial thingy. Uh, the pinout, which is super complex, uh, as well as a few example circuits and things that you can do with that. If you'll notice, there's a USB uh, memory uh, flash stick connected here, and it's basically the same size as the Pocket Beagle, as, uh, as Ken points out, which is pretty cool. So all kinds of neat stuff to read there. Um, that's under hands-on with the Pocket Beagle. And now I'd like to plug it in, because right now I have a tab in my browser that is not doing anything, but just you wait. So, uh, ooh, let me unplug my webcam. Ooh. Grab my dropped USB cable. <laughs> okay. And we're gonna plug this in. Doop. Don't worry about the wires on this, that's just because I was gonna uh, hook up something else that you'll see in a minute. <laughs> Not in this video, later on. So we got these sweet, pretty little flashing blue LEDs and stuff. Um, very beautiful. And when you start it up, there's a little heartbeat LED that starts doing this little twice flash thingy. Um, and now if I reload that page, <laughs> this is super cool. 
Uh, it's actually a server that is hosting this uh, these files and whatnots. Oh, come on. <laughs> you are supposed to be... There we go, okay. It took a minute for it to detect it over USB, but no! Okay, I reload the page and it's right here. Um, so this is what your beagle bone comes with, your pocket beagle. Ships loaded with this, which is a ton of information about itself. Super cool. And it tells you all these neat things about how to get started with programming and whatnot. Um, I wanted to show you some of the other cool software things that you can do. I think if I go to vehiclebone.local, we get some other options. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> So it's noticing that my board is connected. Again, this is this is hosted right here. But there's uh, this thing called Bone Script, which is pretty neat. And it's an, a JavaScript library that simplifies working with this thing. I wanted to show you this because it's really cool. Uh, it's an instant way to get the hang of interfacing with the built-in LEDs on the Pocket Beagle. So Bone Script. If I hit turn, L OK, well, first I should show you um, the way that the LEDs look right now. Remember how we've got like, you know, these four LEDs over here and one of them is flashing its little heartbeat? Okay, well, stay tuned. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the run button for turn LEDs on and they immediately all come on in this beautiful cyan color that I love. And if I go back and hit off, I should really be showing you how instantaneous this is because it happens immediately. I mean, obviously because you are, you're executing the code on it. Uh, so there's not even like any talking to it over serial or whatever. Like this web page is on here uh, and so are the LEDs. So it's super fast. Uh, and then also if you want to, since I turned those so off, then the heartbeat has stopped. So if you want to hit uh, restore LEDs to default state, that is exactly what happens. And you'll see that uh, it's the user zero LED there that is doing the blinking because it's got that heartbeat function it's running. Uh, and indeed, that is what we have happening right here. So cool. And I'm gonna wrap up with some other cool hacks or projects that use the Pocket Beagle already because I think those deserve a little bit more recognition and they're fun. Uh, if you have a Pocket Beagle, you can already get started playing around with these things. Um, all right, let's take a look. <laughs> so there's a Pocket Beagle enclosure remix that gives you the pinout listing on the top of the board, which is kind of cool. If you've got mount headers mounted to there, it makes um, breadboarding and prototyping really simple because you you can just glance at it. Um, we have the rest of the project on the beagleboard.org page. Um, you can get to there if you click on any of these existing tutorials and just click the Pocket Beagle in the bill of materials down here. Neat. Oh yeah, and there's another uh, introduction to Bone Script, which is pretty cool. We've got a, a USB hub cape for the Pocket Beagle, which is pretty neat. You know, as this thing comes, it doesn't actually have another USB port. It has the one that uh, it makes it behave as a client. So you've got a micro USB port that gives its power, it power and allows your computer to see it as a device. However, if you want it to see other things as devices, for example, a keyboard or a mouse or whatever, uh, or maybe a, a microphone or a webcam, then you'll need to have it be a USB host which uh, there's a breakout that exists for that that's actually mentioned in Ken's intro. Let me show you. Here we go. Uh, that's how he's attaching this flash drive is through this little breakout uh, that converts five of the pins into a little micro USB connection. Um, another way to do that again is this with this uh, USB hub cape. Super cool. Uh, a little bit more complex of a solution, but if you're working with USB-A as opposed to micro USB, it could be really useful and also you get more output ports. Super cool.
so it's like a hub instead of a single thingy. You can also get micro USB based hubs, which can be useful as well for the uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero and Zero W. But this is a good option too. And then finally, we've got uh, a lot of people use the Beagle Bones for drones, UAVs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and you can do that as well with the Pocket Beagle, Pocket Pilot, an autopilot based on the $25 Pocket Beagle. So cool. This one is published by Patrick. I totally recommend checking it out. It's fascinating um, and super cute. Got a cool video here. And it's got a GitHub page if you want to get involved. All right, that's our uh, roundup of cool new stuff for the Beagle Bone, including the Pocket Beagle and the regular size Beagle Bone. Once again, that's the Bella Mini is the audio uh, cape for the Pocket Beagle. It's a smaller version of the original Bella, and you can find that at bella.io. Uh, you can check out the blog post about it on our blog, hacks.io slash blog. And then also there's the Beagle Wire, which is from Michael Welling, who incidentally also helped design this thing, which is super cool. Um, also known as QWERTY Embedded. So uh, thanks to Michael for contributing so much to the community and to uh, obviously our friends Jason Kreidner and Drew Fastini at BeagleBoard.org. Uh, they do so much cool work with this open source organization and we love supporting them. So go check it out. Thanks and have an awesome Thursday, Wednesday. It's Wednesday, right?